Hello Jackals, in this video I'll show you how to make bouncing balls in a 3D object and this video was inspired by this video by Simon Upsdell. The difference being is how to apply the lights to the bouncing balls and also because we won't be using a hard coded expression, we can actually use another object. Now let's get digital. We'll need to make a fusion composition, so go to the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition, give it a name, and you can also change the duration, I'll change it to 10 seconds, put this fusion composition onto the timeline, select it, and go into the fusion page. Now I will first make the scene, so what I need is the cube, so a shape 3D node, I need to render this out, I will need a camera and a spotlight. I'll first connect this and see what we have. I usually like to select the merge node so that I can see the whole composition and then select the camera to position it back. Now in this case I will simply go to the shape 3D node, change the shape to a cube and change the size. In the transform I can simply adjust the y axis and in the camera I'll use the rotate method or option to rotate it down a little bit and then I'll position it up. So this will be my base position, I can always change it. Now with the spotlight I'll do the same thing, maybe something like this, but because I don't see anything I have to go to the render node to enable it, so enable the lighting and the shadows and I can also put the spotlight a bit closer so that I can see where the actual light falls. Maybe something like this for now. I'll also add the background, I'll just use a simple one and use a fast noise. Now you can't connect it because this is a 2D scene and to make it a 3D scene I'll use an image plane, connect it like this, now we have a plane. With the image plane selected, go to the transform and rotate it on the X position by minus 90 degrees and scale it up, position it down something like this and in the fast noise we'll have to adjust the color so we can simply raise the alpha and then adjust the contrast, detail and brightness to what you want. Now in this case I'll probably have to position the camera higher and then position it down like so, maybe also bring it a little bit closer so that I don't have to increase the size of this image plane that has the fast noise too much. So this is the base setup, now what we need to do is make this cube transparent. The way I'll do it is how Simon Opsdell did it, but instead of using images I'll just simply use a fast noise. Then we need a blend node and the luma keyer to mask this out, well not this fast noise but this one. Now in my example I use the soft glow node in between here but you don't have to and this goes then into the shape 3D. Now in the fast noise you can adjust the color to what you want, but what needs to be done or adjusted is in the luma key, so increase the lows and the highs, and in the blend adjust the alpha and opacity. And what you'll also want to do is enable the two-sided lighting. Now in the fast noise you can make as much customization as you want, you can also animate this with the seed rate but I'll just leave it as is for now. So now we have the scene and the transparent box and what I'll add now is some bouncing balls and to do that I'll use particles. Go to the frame that you want to spawn the particles at, I'll go to frame 0, I'll just use 3 of them, keyframe this and on the next frame, frame 1, I'll lower this to zero so that I only have three particles throughout the scene. Also increase the lifespan 
In this case, I'll use 300 frames. To see the particles, you need the particle render node. And once you have it set up, you can connect it to the merge 3D. Now if I display it, you can see that the particle emitter is in the center and that's because I haven't changed anything. I only rotated the cube a little bit on the Y axis. So in the particle emitter, you can leave the region as is. You can increase its size if you want. But what we need to increase is the style to be hang on. Maybe adjust the size. We can always come back to this later. And what you also want to adjust is the velocity. If you want the particles to move around. So let's add some velocity. The particles should move out of the box. And that's because nothing is limiting them. But we'll change that in a bit. So how we'll achieve the limit so they don't leave this cube is with a particle bounce node, P bounce. In the P bounce, go to region and from line, select a mesh. And now you can connect the mesh. And in this case, the mesh that we'll be using is this shape 3D node. So now if we play this, the particles should bounce off of the wall, which they do. You may get something like this, where the ball goes outside of the mesh. So in that case, the easiest way to cheat this is to lower the size. And because we'll be adding lows, you won't really see much of this happening. And if you really don't like this, you can always change the random seeds so that you won't get this issue. Now the particles are moving in the same direction, so the best thing that you can do is to change the angle at which they spawn, change the angle variance, and that should pretty much fix the animation so that they go in separate directions. So now we have the cube, we have the particles, or the orbs that are limited by this shape, we have the camera for the final view, and we have the background as black. And you can set this as what you want. And in the spotlight, you can also change the drop off, change the cone and the penumbra angle to what you want. And if you want, you can also change the color. But what you probably want to do is change the intensity. Now we can always change the color of the orbs by going to the particle emitter and just changing the color controls. But that's really not what we want. We want these orbs to pop out and that is where the light comes in. Now we want to add some lights and for the lights to constantly follow the particles. If you watched my previous video and you didn't understood what I was doing, this is what I was trying to do. So with the replicate 3D node, we'll take these particles. In this case, I only have three. You can use as many as you want. You'll connect them like so. And then you'll add a point light and connect it to the green input. At this point, you won't see anything when it comes to the lights and also the lights won't be moving. So let's connect this to the merge 3D and see what we get. We get something very bright. So in the point light, you should drop the intensity way down before you connect this. So we do have the lights moving. Now at the moment, the orbs are still a little bit bland. So what I'll do is I'll add some blur to them or a glow. And I'll do it the same way that Simon Obsdell did. I'll just use different values. So I'll need a merge node. I need this to be the same view. So I'll use the same camera. I'll connect it to this merge. I'll also use the same spotlight. And I'll use these particles. And what I can also do is I can use a point light. I'll just use this one, connect it, and maybe I'll adjust the value. And this point light will be in the center. As you can see, it's in the center of the whole composition. I just have to connect them, but I'll connect them separately. So this will be a separate render that will go from here to here 
but I still need something else in between and that something will be a bunch of blur nodes or maybe use 3 nodes the blur size will be 16 the blend will be 0.8 for the first one 0.6 for the second one and 0.4 for the third one and then we simply have to connect them as you can see we have some blur so this can also change with the light the biggest change will be if we set this point light to quadratic and lower the intensity and you can do the same thing with this point light change this to quadratic just lower the intensity and adjust it by a tiny bit and now when you play this you will see that the orbs bounce off the walls and the light also follows the orbs but the intensity is way too much you can also change the mode to linear and lower the decay rate so it's not flat so something like this I have the same setup I just position the nodes around and the last step that Simon Obsdal used you just copy the shape to the node so you can just increase the size a tiny bit maybe 0.4 and in the material lower the opacity and the alpha to get a glass kind of effect and then maybe also change the color to a glassy one now this is basically it but what you can do is I'll simply disconnect this glass one for now you take this shape 3D node and instead of a cube maybe use a torus in this case I have to make it a lot smaller so maybe something like this but in this case what you also have to do is change the particle emitter so I have to position the particle emitter inside the torus otherwise the orbs will fly out as you can see so change the location maybe something like this I have all of them inside now we have some bouncing orbs inside the torus you can always adjust the bounciness how this will behave and in the shape 3D node if you want this to be the same shape simply copy it and instead of this one use the copied value and simply increase it the size a little bit to make it look like it's inside the glass and this is what I ended up with if you liked the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and until next time jackals keep it digital Thank <laughs> you.